Markdown makes it easy to create nested lists, also known as sublists or multi-level lists. Let's take a look at using this to clean up our shopping list. So you can see that our current shopping list is being rendered as a single flat list here. And we can use list nesting to add a little bit more structure to it. So as a first step, let's say that we wanted apples here to be displayed under fruits. We can just go to the start of our list item, so in this case apples, right before the very uh, start character, so before the dash which is going to start the list, and we're going to add two space characters. These two space characters makes the apple item here be treated as a new sublist. So if we look over at the rendered markdown, you can see that we are now getting a little bit of structure here where apples is going to be displayed as a new unordered list underneath of fruits. If you're using tabs instead of spaces, you could also just add a single tab character here. Now when determining how many space characters to actually add, just a general rule of thumb is that you want to make sure you have at least enough spaces so that the start of the sublist line up, lines up with the very first text in the parent list item here. So you can see that the text in the parent list item here is fruits. So the first character here is F. We want to make sure that everything is lining up at least with the letter F here. So you can see that this is the case with apples here where we have the two space characters. If we just had a single space character, now it is no longer lining up and is just going to be treated as a normal flat list again. As soon as we add those two space characters, we get a nested list. You can even have more than two space characters. So if you like using a little bit of extra indentation, you could actually use four space characters instead. Just be careful because you can actually add too many space characters, which we'll take a look at later on. So let's just go in here and clean up the rest of our list. So I'll add two spaces here, two spaces here, and two spaces here. You can see that even though this one has four and these other ones have two, it is still just being treated as a single list here. So it's not um, messing it up to have that, that extra spacing here. But I'm, I'm just going to go and make things consistent. Just to make your life a little bit easier, I'd recommend always just sticking with a consistent amount of indentation. So if you like two space characters, that's great. Use that everywhere. If you like four, use that everywhere. Or if you like tabs, use tabs everywhere. Don't mix and match different types of spaces and tabs and things because that can be a little bit hard to figure out what's going on. Now we can use these same rules to go and create a second level of nesting. So if we wanted Honeycrisp here to be displayed under apples and create another sublist, all we have to do is go to the start of Honeycrisp here and add two space characters again. Or if you're using tabs, another tab character. Now you can see that we have three levels of nesting. So Honeycrisp is being displayed under apples. It is following the same rule again. So if we look at these, uh, how things are actually lining up here, the start of the sublist is aligned with the very first uh, character of apples here. So this is correctly going and creating a nested list where if we just added a single extra space character here, you can see that that would not create a sublist. And if we added the two, then we actually get a nested list as you would expect. These same techniques also work for ordered lists. So I could go in here on my ordered list down here, add two space characters at the start, and now we have created a sublist below our unordered parent list. We can do the same for the second list item here. So now we have a sublist that is an ordered list instead of an unordered list. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one thing you have to be careful of is that you don't accidentally add too many space characters. So you can have two spaces here, um, you could have four spaces, but as soon as I go and add, let's say I have five spaces, as soon as I add a six space here, you can see that our rendering has now been messed up and carrots is actually now displaying on the same line as vegetables. This is probably not what you want. Um, and what is actually going on here is that we've now created a single paragraph that is treating the text here as just normal text instead of rendering it as a list. The same thing would happen if you're using tabs and you added two tab characters in this case instead of just a single tab character. Uh, a good rule of thumb to remember is that tabs are basically the equivalent of four spaces in Markdown. So they're going to have the same behavior in this case. Now we can see a little bit more clearly what is going on if I actually add a new line after vegetables here. So I'll add a new line. Now you can see that carrots is actually being rendered a, maybe a little bit more correctly, but it's still uh, incorrect here. It's being treated as a fenced code block now, or not a fenced code block, a normal code block uh, that is defined with indentation. And this is helping us know what is going on here. So in this instance, the first two spaces are basically being considered the start of a sub list item. And then the next four space characters here are being considered the content. Um, that is, these four space characters would normally start a indented code block, and that is exactly what is happening here. So we have the two space characters, and then four space characters here that are de defining the start of an indented code block. And in this case, this is now going to be treated as an indented code block rather than a list item like we would expect. So just be careful not to add too many space characters. You generally want to have the sweet spot, and I kind of tend to stick to either two or four space characters just to keep things consistent. So that's a quick look at nested lists, also known as sublists or multi-level lists in Markdown. As you can see, they're pretty easy to create, and they render more or less like what you would expect looking at the text, which is one thing I always like about Markdown.